Hey guys, uh, I'm Brian from XM and I was just reading uh, some feedback and comments on uh, some collectors receiving our Moon Knight and having a, kind of uh, some issues with how to place the cape on and the seam lines and everything. So I thought maybe what we can do is do a uh, quick guide and tips video today uh, to show people how to best put this piece together. Come, let's go. Hey guys. So we managed to uh, get a piece from our warehouse. Uh, it's a production piece from the factory. So we could use this to kind of demonstrate uh, what is it about Moon Knight and how do we set it up properly. So but before I start, right, just to explain. Now the cape, the cape itself, actually if you look at the designs and the amount of uh, curvature and details. It is one of the most complicated capes that we've, we've produced to date. Uh, because of the complexity of the scalp, and in you know for shipping purposes and everything, uh, we decided against casting this in polystone or coca porcelain because it will be too brittle, and it will very very likely uh, break in a lot of places. You know there are all these little areas which will just break. So the body, how it's, however, for Moon Knight, everything else is in coca porcelain, so it's all very hard, brittle, and sturdy. Right? But so for PU, the thing to understand about PU is that it's actually. Uh, slightly soft so if you look I don't know if you can see this but you can see that I can actually bend it slightly so it's actually quite soft and a little bit kind of uh, bouncy in a way so that's the reason why we did the cape this way because if this was done in uh, coca porcelain I think we're pretty sure that the breakage is gonna be really high it kind of no matter how we pack it uh, so that's the reason why we did it this way now the thing that about PU is that because it's a different material composite from uh, coca porcelain uh, they have different kind of um, tolerance to temperature changes. So when we ship stuff, they are packed in boxes, they go into containers, they go overseas and the sun sometimes shine on outside container. The temperatures can get really high. And so PU, being a softer material, tend to be more prone to doing a little bit of warping. Uh, which is the reason why when we design this piece, the connection area here, because you know, because there's a possibility that it might warp slightly, we didn't want it to be uh, done in coca porcelain where it's so so um, exact that if you couldn't fit it in, it will scratch the body. So this is a little bit more soft, so it does that. Now let's put this on, and uh, we can kind of uh, go through some of the things and tips and tricks how to uh, make the cake look nicer. So you can see that being a nice, uh, soft, slightly softer material, it's not as heavy, it doesn't take so much uh, uh, weight on the statue itself, on the body. Now, once I place it in, make sure that it's all snugly in place, right? You can see here, there are a, a few areas of uh, support. Uh, the shoulders area, this part, and this shoulder area as well. So these are all the areas that the cape should fit on. And you can start to see that there will be some slight little tolerance of gaps because there's no way for these lines to be perfectly lined up because of the two different materials. Now let's put on the head to see how it looks now. No. Okay, so now we've got the, the portrait on and you can see that there are still some uh, noticeable small gaps between here. If I turn the statue, you can see gaps here as well. So this is a piece that I've taken up from uh, our production um, warehouse unit anyway. So this is the same stuff that everybody gets. Obviously because um, depending on where you stay, depending on how long this thing has been kept in storage before it ships to you, there will be very slight variance uh, in terms of the gap areas. But it is, it is designed with a little bit of tolerance so that it, it won't be an exact fit. It won't be a perfect seamless line which uh, it's almost impossible to achieve because this is done in two separate pieces with two different materials. But having said that, uh, we, we know certain collectors may want to kind of uh, make it even more perfect by, by making the seam lines as little as possible and that there are ways to do it. So uh, let me get a subject matter expert to help us out with this part. Okay guys, I'm so sorry. I, I said I will get a subject matter expert to help us. Uh, I couldn't find any so I think we'll have to make do with uh, Hello Singh. Hey, hi. Hi, hi. hi. <laughs> so Hello Singh, yes, uh, managed to get uh, Busy Singh to stop his painting for a while to help us uh, with this uh, Moonlight piece. So over on my left, you can see we've, we've got a rice cooker. Uh, it is basically not lunchtime. It's just uh, 
one of the ingredients or one of the tools we need uh, in, in these uh, tips and tricks. So we talked about having a little bit of seams and how to improve the seams. So saying is going to walk us through on how he can use hot water or heat to soften the PU and uh, kind of reshape it so that it recovers, the, it tightens the, the shape back. Yeah. So saying, uh, while you're doing this, right, can I ask you, the, the water, how hot does it have to be? Uh, everyone know that boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. So, so, bas so basically, even if it's bubbling hot, still it's, okay. it's fine. Okay, still so okay. it doesn't hurt the PU. Yeah, it's just that the time is faster. What about the pain? The pain, the pain will not affect The pain is about two, I think two to 300 degrees for the pains. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so it is going to be perfectly safe to use hot water, even if it's really, really hot, right? It doesn't really matter. The hottest water you can get is boiling water, and it doesn't hurt. Uh, PU, so don't worry about it. So yes, what do we do now? We okay, now we hold our cape this way okay. because that we know that the warping is at the neck area, or rather the seams are uh, occurs around yes. this connection yes. point. So what we want to do is submerge these areas where the seam lines yeah. are, so yes. that it's softer. Yes, right? for us to don't submerge point. everything. Yeah. Okay. Just just that yeah, area. Just okay. this area. So let's demonstrate so people understand what we mean. Okay. Oh no, there's no rise. Right. So you just need to, uh, you doesn't have to use a, a, a rice cooker. So you guys can just have any pot, any or pan pot that's yes. you know, deep enough and, and yes, wide correct. enough for you to comfortably put uh, this area and submerge it in water. Can so how long do we need to, to about, soak it in? Uh, I think it's about 15, 20 15 seconds. 15 to 20 seconds. Okay. And even if you go a little bit longer, like 30 seconds, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt yeah, the material. Yeah. It's fine. Just uh, in terms of the timing, yeah, I think we are. Pretty much there. So let's have a closer look. So now you can see the, the PU has actually softened quite a fair bit. Can you see how soft it is now? Now don't apply too much pressure, okay? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a this this state, this softened state will last for a few minutes, which is good enough for us to then yeah. put it onto the statue. Now um don't worry about the water onto the main body as well because yes, uh, our paint is resistant, so don't worry about the hot water, it will not hurt the paint. So what Seng is doing is he's going to set up the portrait with the cape in and while the cape portion is still kind of soft and warm, he's going to press it down at all the areas where the seams are, the seam lines are. So what this does is that he's basically kind of like um, uh, pressing the softened material to, to, to make it cover the seams. So the theory is that the heat softened this, uh, this cape, right? So the reason why there are a little bit of these seams in the first place is because when we ship it in big containers um, and they are packed in very tightly confined space, the heat can go up to as high as 80 uh, degrees, 60 right? 60 to 80 degrees. 60 to 80 degrees. Long, for long time. For long, long periods of time. So what happens is during this time, this PU itself could walk a little. As I explained earlier, that's why we make a little bit of tolerance so that it doesn't scratch your your body when you put it in. So we are using the same theory, using heat to kind of make it soft again and then tighten the, the gaps. So what we'll do is, uh, you can see clearly now, the gaps are, are much lesser. And uh, what we could do is uh, after the video, at the end of the video, we'll post photos. Because we've taken photos of before and we'll take photos of after, we'll put it side by side so you guys can see the comparison. Oh, I forgot to ask you saying when you were pressing it just now, how long do you need to press it for? Uh, until it cool down to about our room temperature. Wow, okay, so basically you you, pre you press it down and you hold it, you know, for about what, for four to five minutes until it cools down. And if you want to quicken the, the, the whole thing, you could have uh, take a cloth, take a rag, uh, put it with, with uh, water, cold water, and put it on top. And put it on top because again, heat softens PU. And cold water will make it harden again. Yeah. So that's that's one way you can quicken it. But if, you know, I would just hold it and then you know for three four minutes, not an issue, right? Yeah. Um, and you have helpers. You can call your helpers to use the cold rack to help you. Yeah. If you, you want to make it faster, just be there. So. Yeah. yeah. Like what we think has just done was just pretty much hold it for, for two minutes. Yeah. I think. And I can see there's a yeah. We'll take some photos to show you the improvements, right? Yeah. So um. Okay. So uh, just a recap. Um, the reason, as I explained earlier. Uh, of the video is that the cape and the body are made from different materials. The cape is made of soft PU because uh, there is 
really not a lot of other alternatives we have. If we make the cake in copas porcelain, it can't be as thin and as kind of, uh, you know there there will be a lot of breakages and uh, you, I, I, you will not survive the shipping. Yeah, and even if it, it survives shipping, when you try to you know try to put the cake on being a copas porcelain onto the copas porcelain body. It's likely going to cause a lot of scratching yes, and chipping. Right. So that's why the softer cake material actually works. But the downside is it will have a little bit of tolerance for small seams at the contact points. But I think with this tape, you could reduce those. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, so and see um, how thin the cake we made. I don't think anyone can make this type of thin cake in the in, market in, for in now. In polystone, you can't, yes, you can't make it this and way. The shapes. Yeah, it's going to be too thick if you use uh, coca porcelain. Yeah. So, yeah. You see, it's never been. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much, Seng, for coming to help me uh, with these tips and all. Don't no uh, worry. Yeah, let me just say that uh, I collect a lot of PVC uh, anime statues as well, and they are made from PVC, which is also <coughs> softer plastics. So this 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 tip work as well. Then so you can do it. Yeah. So if you have a PVC statue, is kind of like leaning. You could dip the um, the the portion where it's leaning into the warm water. Yes. Uh, until it softens, straighten it again, cool it. And then it, that should help a lot. Yeah. So we hope the tips help uh, all the collectors. And if you like the video and you like us to do more, just comment below the YouTube and let us know what else you like to see us uh, do. Yeah, thank you, Zane. Thank you.